talking about the Taconic Parkway tragedy here in New York, where a mom drove the wrong way on the parkway, killing herself and seven others. Autopsy reports found drugs and alcohol in her system, and now yet another probe has begun. CBS News correspondent Terrell Brown reports. From tragic loss to criminal investigation, authorities are looking into the family of Diane Schuler. What was known about her drinking and drug abuse when she drove the wrong way on a New York highway? It led to the crash that killed eight people, including Schuler herself, four children riding in her van, and three men in an oncoming SUV. Her five-year-old son was the only survivor. Toxicology reports found the equivalent of 10 shots of vodka in her body, and police say she was high on marijuana. Her family vigorously denies Schuler abused alcohol. She is not an alcoholic, and my heart is resting every night when I go to bed. Something medically had to happen. There is no way she would ever jeopardize the children. The family says Mrs. Schuler was a diabetic and may have suffered a stroke, but a broken bottle of vodka was found in the burned minivan, and the medical examiner found no sign of a fatal medical condition. Investigators will focus on her husband, Daniel Schuler. What did he know of his wife's substance abuse, and could he have stopped her from causing the deadly crash? Terrell Brown, CBS News, New York. So our question for this morning's early line, who is legally to blame for the Taconic tragedy? Should Diane Schuler's husband or brother be held responsible? Joining us now in Los Angeles is Lisa Bloom, CBS News legal analyst in Washington, former prosecutor Wendy Murphy and author of Injustice for Some. And in Long Island, Thomas Ruskin, president of CMP Group Investigations and the lead investigator for the Schuler family. Good morning to everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Chris. Wendy, I'm going to start, morning, uh, I'm gonna start you off with, uh, this morning. Child Protective Services announced last night they're looking into Daniel Schuler here. Where, where does this come from uh, and, and how does this affect, I guess, this case? Well, it's a good question. Um, was he a neglectful parent for allowing his children to get into that car? Child Protective Services certainly has jurisdiction to ask that question, and obviously they have a reason to be concerned if indeed he knew his wife either was drinking, was drunk, was high at the time she drove away with his children in the car, or that she had a propensity, a problem, if you will, with alcohol, and he knew about it, then he could be held reckless under Child protective services standards um, and potentially lose custody of the remaining five-year-old child who did survive if indeed uh, that's the finding they make. And we did hear Daniel say in that piece, and he's been saying it all week, his wife was not an alcoholic. He never so much as even saw his wife take a drink uh, or ever be drunk in his presence. Lisa, let me ask you, the lawyers representing the Bastardi and the Longo family, the three adults that were killed in the SUV that Diane Schuler's car had hit, they're looking at a, a civil lawsuit here. Do they have a case? Well, they certainly have a case against the mother's estate, if there is one, if there is any money in that estate. There may be insurance money from her car insurance. I don't see a case against the husband or against the brother. Under American law, ordinarily, individuals are not responsible for the wrongful conduct of another unless they contribute to it in some meaningful and significant way. Now, from everything that we've heard, mom got in the car at the campsite that morning completely sober. She was sober at about 10.30 a.m. when she went to McDonald's. She was sober at about 11.30 a.m. when she was on a phone call. And if indeed she ingested alcohol and drugs, it was somewhere between 11.30 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. when this horrible crash occurred. Hard for me to see how the husband or the brother are going to be legally responsible for that. Wendy, let me ask you, how, how does the family then have to, to make this case? Because Daniel Schuler was not in the car and by all accounts did not facilitate this accident in any way. So where is their case? Where does that stand? What do they have to yeah, do? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we need to know a little bit more before we can answer the question. We'd have to speculate about what he knew or should have known. Yep. Uh, you know, the fact that she could drink as much as she drank leads me to believe she had a history. And if he knew about that history, then there could be some liability because he was aware she had a drinking problem. So he should have basically prevented her from driving, period. But I'll tell you this much. The family, especially through their lawyer, has had this protest too much quality about how she wasn't the type. She never would have done this. There's no way we knew anything. I mean, it, it's almost too much to hear what they're saying so it's raising questions for me are they covering for what they yeah. knew because they're so firm in saying that they knew nothing well let's ask Tom here he's investigating every aspect of this case for the Schuler family but Tom what new evidence have you uncovered and what is her background I mean we're hearing two sides of the story here the family says not a drunk but all accounts the toxicology report says it right there she blew a 1-9 and that doesn't include some alcohol that was found still in her stomach 
Well, first she didn't blow a 1-9. The toxicology comes back from an autopsy, and the autopsy is always subject to questioning. As far as Wendy's point is concerned, she's not an alcoholic. This is not a woman who, dr who drank who drank regularly, she was an irregular drinker. And when she would drink, she'd drink half a drink. That's what our investigation has shown, as well as what Lisa said, as far as the leaving of the campground, people saw her that morning, her husband kissed her goodbye, he kissed the kids goodbye, and put her in the car. At McDonald's, the police and us have both verified that when she left McDonald's at around 10.30 in the morning, she was totally sober, she made a telephone call at 11.37, and again, Seemed sober, absolutely nothing wrong. She was running a little late. She told her brother that she'd be home in time for her niece's uh, drama Dance rehearsal yep. that afternoon. So, 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 well, well, so you gotta, I mean, the, the problem is the toxicology results. Well, the toxicology a, puts alcohol and THC in her system. Now, marijuana could have been smoked within 30 days prior, and that THC test would come back positive. But Tom, right. you got to get around that toxicology. Huge amounts of vodka alcohol in her system at the time of the crash. And a broken bottle of vodka in That's, the car. Uh, think, this is a car that Daniel drove too. So whether he knew about that bottle in the car is going to raise liability questions as well. Well, w Wendy, again, you're you're incorrect in your statements. What you, w Daniel didn't drive that car. He drove a separate car. That's why Daniel wasn't with her that day. He drove ahead with the dog in a truck. The, the car belongs to her brother. So any civil suit, even though I'm not an attorney, would be against that that insurance policy or that person. It wasn't there even was her car There was a statement made yesterday day. on behalf of the family that they had a habit of transporting open bottles of vodka back and forth and that that was one of the ways they showed responsibility with how they brought alcohol to yep. and from the campsite and back to their home. If he had a habit of that, no. he would have known she might have had an open bottle of booze in the car. It's, it's a factor that will hurt her. Guys, I gotta it leave it there. Hurt, will I, hurt I, I, their defense. I gotta leave it there. Thanks to, yeah. to the three of you. We do appreciate it. Lisa Bloom, Wendy Murphy, and Tom yeah. Ruskin. Thank you to the three of you again this morning for talking about You're this welcome. is something day, that we will continue to talk about of course more to come this is the early show here on CBS